hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess. This is Nigel. As usual, he's bored. We just, we can't keep him entertained. But anyway, we are here today to tell you about some books that are coming out later this year that we're excited about. Do you like my 90s shirt? I very much like it. Are you gonna tell them about the books you wanna read? So Nigel's more of an audiobook listener, and I kind of do a mix of both. I do audio, physical, well, a mix, and ebook, but he primarily listens to the audio. He doesn't really get into physical books. He tries to eat them. Anyway, so I did one of these videos earlier in the year, and that was mainly books coming out through like May and June. So I have some that are coming out in the fall, primarily August and September. And the reason is there are a lot of books obviously coming out all the months going forward, but I'm in a weird mood right now. And a lot of the books that are coming out that I originally would have put on this list are fantasy. And I'm not in the mood for fantasy or sci-fi. Are you? No, we've been really in the mood for like thriller, mystery, romance, nonfiction, really things that are not in a series, one and done. <laughs> books so that's going to be mainly what you see on this list what did you have something else to add did i forget so let's go ahead and get into it aren't you so handsome get him a kiss thank you thank you okay so if you haven't watched my previous so if you're new here Sit down, please. If you're new here, I do not read full synopsis, synopsis, synopsis of books. So I'm not gonna read you the full synopsis either. I'm gonna give you a general view of what the book is or what my my perception of what the book is, maybe some keywords, uh-uh. Maybe some keywords about what the book is about. And then of course I'll link the book down below so you can go look it up if you are into reading full synopsis. I am not because I feel like they tend to ruin a book or you just give me too much information. So I look for certain things and then I go from there. Also, a really cute cover does not hurt. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, is this what you want? Sit down. Sit down, please. Nigel really loves his, he's eating duck. Like really only just eating duck. He's been loving these. This is not sponsored. It's from a local pet store in Sicily. Um, He's also been loving summer fruits. He loves watermelon. So the first one I have, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna go in chronological order. So the first one I have for August 3rd, nope, hush. So the first book I have for July 13th is by Megan Miranda. It's called Such a Quiet Place. So this is like a thriller mystery. I've read two others by her that I really liked. And this one is in a small town. These two people were murdered and now the town, like no one wants to live there. The people who live there want to move. They can't sell their houses because like they're haunted by this horror. But the person who killed these two people now has had their conviction overturned and has come back to the town. And that's all I read. And I was like, sounds messy. I really love the small town. Um, she usually does that in her books and I have enjoyed it before so I feel like this will be something right up my alley. Are you not in the mood for that one? Does it sound too scary? We can read it in the daytime. It'll be okay. You'll be fine. Shh. What? Do you want to come right here? So I have How We Fall Apart by Katie Zhao that comes out on August 3rd down thank you anyway so this said crazy rich crazy rich asians meets one of us is lying which i haven't read either of those but it's like an elite prep school and a friend turns up murdered and so i was sold on that i am really wanting more dark academia because there is some good out there but there's a lot that's classified as it that ain't good so i'm hoping this one will be good and i didn't read much further into that one Although this does have a number one by it and I thought it would just be a standalone. So I don't know how this is supposed to become a series, but we'll see. On that same day, August 3rd, another Dark Academia book or what it sounds like is A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. So I haven't read anything by this author, but 
it sounds like it could give me what I want because it said for fans of Wilder Girls and Ninth House, although I did not like Ninth House and I haven't read Wilder Girls, but this is a dark, twisty, atmospheric thriller at a boarding school. And just the setup sounds like it could be promising. So the school has a history of witchcraft and like these five girls that mysteriously died. And so I'm sure there's going to be them trying to solve this mystery of the girls, or I don't know if they're gonna come back, if there's gonna be like a supernatural element, but I just read Boarding School, which is, I would give it a try. I mean, I'm gonna borrow it from the library. Hopefully they have it. So there's no harm in giving it a shot. So this next one is called Mrs. March by Virginia Fato. It comes out August 10th. And so a book, Olive talked about this book and it sounded really interesting. It also already has an adaptation, which is very interesting. That does not mean a book is going to be good just because it has an adaptation. So the character in this book, her husband has a novel that comes out and ends up doing really well. But there's a character in the book, a woman who is categorized as less than pleasant, less than upstanding you know, something salacious. And a lot of people think that the character is inspired by her. And so this sends her kind of spiraling mentally. She doesn't really trust her husband or feel like she knows him anymore. She starts questioning herself because um, they talk about kinds of sends her into a psychosis. And so, and then it says, uh, one that begins merely within the pages of a book, but may uncover both a killer and the long buried secrets of her past. So sounds intriguing. I am, uh, definitely down to give that one a try as well. August 10th, we have The Devil Makes Three by Tori Bovolino. I think this may be the only young adult title on here. I'm not sure, but it's like a young adult horror novel. So I'm intrigued. I have read a few of those that I have enjoyed. And so this says Tess Matheson only wants three things. Time to practice her cello, for her sister to be happy and for everyone else to leave her alone. But instead she finds herself working the summer at her boarding school library. Are we seeing a theme? Okay. And so then other words that stood out to me besides boarding school were uh, something about a demon. Like they accidentally release a demon from an ancient book. And they have to figure out basically how to get the demon back in the book, I'm guessing, and maybe not to, how not to die. So I'm intrigued. Also, I freaking love the cover. So that helps. So hopefully it's good. Then on August 31st, we have My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. I read The Only Good Indians last year and it was so unique. Like it took me a while to process my thoughts, but I really enjoyed it. And so this is a new horror novel from him. So some of the things that stood out to me was it saying that on the surface, it's a story of a, a story of a murder in small time America, but in the heart is a biting critique of American colonialism, indigenous displacement and gentrification, and a heartbreaking portrayal of a broken young girl who uses horror movies to cope with the horror of her own life. So again, I know that this will be definitely a unique take on a horror novel, something that like slowly creeps up on you and creeps you out. So I'm really um, excited to read that one. And August 31st, that's right around the time for spooky season. So that'll be a good one to read in October. All right, getting into September, on September 7th, I have Never Saw Me Coming. And when I was looking up books, there was another book that was right under this one on a list I was reading, a blog post, which I'll have linked down below. And it was almost had a similar title. It was like Never Saw You Coming, but it was definitely the opposite. It was like a rom com -y kind of cover, and this one is not. So this one is a, I think like a psychological thriller, an adult psychological thriller where this school program or this college program studies psychopaths. So the main character is one of seven students at her DC based college who are part of a clinical study for psychopaths. Students like herself who lack empathy and can't comprehend emotions like gear, like fear or guilt. One of the students in the program is found murdered and so then they have to figure out who murdered them. But I thought that's so interesting to have a main character who's a psychopath in a group of other psychopaths. I don't know that I've ever read anything else like this. So I hope that it's, it plays with my mind as a true psychological thriller will. Um, also in like, perfect season out in September, you know, I hoping it packs the punch that the description is giving me because I'll be upset if it didn't, but you know, 
it's it's a risk you take you know also on september 7th is a completely different book it's by bethany c morrow it's called so many beginnings a little woman remix so i really liked little women i thought it was a bit long and you know some of how the things ended for certain characters i didn't love but i really did love little women especially the movie um and this cover one i love the cover and a little woman remix with all black sisters so i don't think you really need to know much beyond that so except so this one is basically a coming age story of four black sisters it's still beth amy joe and meg and it's in this, the american civil war era it says their family is finally able to put down roots so meg is a teacher joe's a writer beth is a seamstress and amy's a dancer so i'm just really interested to see how she she beyond what's already obvious how she changes the story um and i just think it sounds really exciting and the cover is so beautiful i have not read bethany c morrow's other work but i saw this and i was like yes please give that to me no no feet this there you go so the next book I have on my list is actually a nonfiction. I believe it's a memoir. It comes out September 14th and it's called Redeeming Justice from Defendant to Defender, My Fight for Equity on Both Sides of a Broken System by Jared Adams. Already, I know this book is gonna piss me off and probably make me cry, but it sounds really good. So like in the description, he was convicted of a crime. So it said he was 17 when an all white jury sentenced him to prison for a crime he didn't commit. But now he is out after, I don't know if he served his time or if he got uh, his conviction overturned. Now he's a lawyer. So we're definitely gonna see both sides of our, like he said, broken system. I'm very interested in that. I probably don't need to read this because heather will say why do you keep reading these books that make you sad or angry but it sounds really good and another reason i don't need to read it is because every time i read or come across a case where someone is wrongly convicted i get all in my feelings and i'm like i want to become a lawyer and then i'm like no ma'am we don't want to go to law school so <laughs> I need to calm down but that sounds like it's going to be like i said heartbreaking i'm gonna be mad but then he obviously has overcome a lot and is doing good work now but still i'm gonna be pissed so i don't know for i was thinking maybe that could be a book club pick but i'm kind of not wanting to do like new releases for the book club just because you know then you it's harder to get right when a book comes out i don't know we'll see we'll see another recommendation i got from a book olive and this is another non-fiction it's called personal effects what recovering the dead teaches me about caring for the living doesn't that sound like something i would love by robert a jensen and so let's see so he is the owner of the world's leading or largest disaster recovery company i don't i touched on this kind of before um, when talking about like forensic anthropology and how one of the books I read she was a person who would go on missions like this so when there's a huge disaster like an earthquake a tsunami where there's hundreds of casualties the local government usually has to call in other people to help and so someone like the forensic uh, the, forensic anthropologist that I was talking about would go to help but also then there's a side of the personal effects so this says um this so he chronicles the unseen world behind the yellow tape explores what it means to be human after a lifetime of caring for the dead so he spent most of his adult life responding to tragedy from the oklahoma city bombing 9 11 south asian tsunami in 2004 and so on and so forth so he talks about like the physical things like recovering people's bodies identifying people's bodies their effects but also then um the emotional recovery that comes after and so it just sounds like it's going to be really interesting but it may be may get a little personal also and that sounds right up my alley for a non-fiction to add to i have mostly non-fiction books downstairs and on this side i have more of my death related non-fiction so that'll have to be probably one i probably buy and i'll get the audio but that one was september 28th i don't know if i said that y'all know what i'm a goddamn liar i have multiple YA titles on here because when or how we fall apart was why okay ignore what i said earlier anyway i have next by tiffany d jackson white smoke and this is september 14th wow i did that out of order anyway it, whatever white smoke by tiffany d jackson beautiful cover again after reading monday is not coming i want to read more of her work but this one i think 
Well, it's going to be a question of, is it like in the character's mind or is it something supernatural? So this is the haunting of Hill House meets Get Out. I never read the book, but I watched the show on Netflix and I loved it. And so this family moves to a new city with this new house, but in their house, you know, some things are going wrong. Um, there's some weird smells, there's weird sounds, and uh, it seems like the house is haunted, but I think the main character is really the only one who's experiencing these things. So is it actually happening or is it in her mind? And that's kind of all I looked at. Uh, yeah, looks amazing. And Haunting of Hill House meets Get Out. After what she did in Monday's Not Coming, I have faith. I have faith in this story to creep me out, stress me out. I'm here for it. Tiffany, let me get that. Hi, handsome. Tell them hi. Tell them hi. Oh, hi. And the last on my list, again, I lied, <laughs> is a science fiction title. And I hope I'm back in the mood to read it in November, but I had to put it on this list because I'm so excited for it and it's Cytonic. It's the third book in the Skyward series by Brandon Sanderson. It comes out November 23rd. Oh my god and i just hope by then i'm back in a sci-fi fantasy mood and if you don't know skyward is a young adult science fiction series by brandon sanderson where our main character spencer her dad was in like he was a pilot in like their air force their military but he abandoned his nation whatever you want to call it at mid fight and so he's been branded traitor and so that label is also on her and her family but she really wants to fly so she goes to flight school and tries to work against uh the stigma and everything that has been set up uh, that's been put against her and i really love it i love i love the first two books and so i'm sure i'm gonna love this one so excited about that so there are so many other books that i saw that were like fantasies uh new in a series or whatever and i'm just like i don't know i feel like i'm gonna be better i feel like i'll be more ready to read a science fiction more than a fantasy just because yeah i don't know and this is a sequel a world i'm already familiar with but like there are some new fantasy series that look interesting that hopefully i can get to sooner than later but i just really have not been in the mood for that at all so those are just some like there's so many obviously there's always so many books coming out so if you have any books that you think i would enjoy that are basically mystery thriller horror romance i know i really didn't put romance on this list but i tend to wait for other people's opinions on romances and then pick them up um and i have i just have like a long backlist of romances I need to read anyway but anyway anything that sounds like what I'm putting on here any non-fiction titles you're aware of um thriller mystery horror romance am I missing any am I missing anything historical fiction that are coming out in the second half of the year that you would like to let me know about you think I may enjoy please let me know down below are you going to read any of these did you know about any of these I'm sure you've known about some of them but uh, or just tell me one anticipated title that comes out later this year that you really, really, really want to get to. So that's it for me today. I'm sorry, Mayana, if you're watching this video, this isn't my mid-year food cut tag. It's because Sajid told me on Twitter, well, he, he just tweeted, that the mid-year is actually July 2nd. So I'm like, oh, well, why would I feel mid-early? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, that's coming soon. Uh, I think that's it for us, right? It's lunchtime. He's getting... He's getting hungry. So stay blessed, hydrated. Please stay hydrated. It's hot. At least it's hot over here. Sunscreened and moisturized. And we will see you in our next one. Bye. Tell them bye.